This is Dave McCain with the Right Tree Genealogy doing another video on FTDNA. This is about a question that I've seen asked by several people. What are equivalents? You know, what do I do with them? What, what do I do? That type of thing. So I'm going to generally cover what an equivalent is, uh, show when they were formed for, from my own personal uh, tree area. And at the request of another member that has been watching my videos, I put myself small down into the corner over here. And I'm going to go ahead and move myself so we can see this. Put myself up in the upper corner here. When you look at your block tree, at the big Y on Family Tree DNA, you can have a, a well-defined branch area, which is ours was considered fairly well-defined. My father and I have FTA 47557. That is a SNP that's unique to the two of us at this point. Then upstream of this is a FT 294408. That is a SNP unique to my branch or my McCain line inside this tree. Then we have one right here that shows two different SNPs. FT29222 and FT294407. And then we go up to another one that's an individual SNP. And then we go up here that has two and right here has three. Now, very first statement I want to make here is equivalence is basically stating that these SNPs were found at the same time or in the same number of people by whichever company found them. FT represents family tree DNA. We'll go over and look at the these three right here to see when they were formed and what what we know from there. I've gone on over and, and fast forwarded this for all of us over to the Izog browser and I looked up the third one on the list. So right here was Y58551 on the top of this list. This is the one that shows as primary on this list or this group, but here's one that is Y58551. So we're going to go over to Izog, look this one up, and we click on it. I typed in, I literally pasted in that SNP ID, and it popped it up here. And now I'm going to click on it so we see the details. This was found by Wifel in 2015. It wasn't found by Family Tree DNA, it was found by Wifel. And it says what the primer is and what the mutation was. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at another one on that same branch section. I go over here and I'm going to grab this one. Go over here, paste it here, hit search, click on this. And this says it was found by FTDNA in 2019. And it goes from G to C. At location, in this case, uh, 20,830,309 is where that one is located. Then I'm going to go to the one that's listed at the top and click on it. This was found in this haplo group, by the way, is L196. That's the upstream branch that defines this in 2019. Now, what do we see from these three SNPs? This one has 20,398,212. That's that's the one that actually is the leader of the branch on FTDNA's website. Then you have FT31548 is 20,830,309, as I mentioned before, found in the same time frame downstream of L196. And then you look at the Wifel that was found at 20,830,308. Now notice, just for the sake of looking at this one, 309. 308. Now, one of the very first things I want to do, going back over to this block tree, it does not mean this one was formed first, this was formed second, and this was formed third. It relates to two things. Number one, when it was found and where it was found on the haplo tree. For FTDNA, they typically list the one that was lower number. So let's go back up here to this one. FT31442 is 20 million, 20.3 million. Okay. Now let's go over to the other one that's FTDNA and it's 20.8 million. Now FTDNA, if it's found in all the members, one that was found by somebody else at some point in time, 
they keep it. They don't put it as the primary though, unless it's the only SNP that's defined in that block. If there's an FT SNP, they're going to put the FT SNP first. That is what I have found in my research. They'll put the FT as the primary if they have an FT over another company's SNP. That's what FTDNA does from what I can tell. Now let's go over and I'm going to go ahead and go in and take a look at this one in more detail on this particular test. I went over into, this is again my father's test if I haven't said that yet, and we're going to type in that uh, Y full number and look at it. Now here's where the importance comes to what we found there on that other page. That other one indicated 308, which is the Y full number, and 309, which is, this happens to be this one here, FT, 31548 has that 309. When you look back at this, you notice that here's the 308, which is the Y full number, and the FT number is right beside it. That's coincidental. It doesn't always happen this way. Now, in this area, there's enough reads to indicate it. You see it, but FTDNA is going to show theirs first if they have one in that branch. Now, back over on this, after looking at the Y browse page and seeing where these three come from. FTDNA puts the first one found at the top of it. If there's a group of them found at the same time, it's the first one found or the first number in the YDNA. Now there is a question that so, said, well, this one was found in 2015 from what we were just looking at. However, when it was found by FTDNA's big Y block for the block tree, it was put in this same location because all the testers that are in this area of the block tree have that SNP. Therefore, they don't know which one came first. They listed it last since it's not their company. And that's, that's what I have seen by FTDNA. Now, the next thing, what do you do next? So I showed this and you go, okay, well, fine. I know that I've seen this before. Well, what the opportunity you have here is, is as follows. You have, in my case, I have three different SNP blocks in my area. Those SNP blocks represent potential testers that we need to break up. There is a def defining person in history. Someone out there, some male out there, can break this apart. So what do we do now? Well, our job as in this community is to help ourselves in the sense of trying to break this apart to see if we can attach an actual person name to this SNP you know, when it occurred in our history, but also for the community as a whole, YDNA. The more testers we get and can break up more SNPs, the better the algorithm can determine when each one was formed and put dates on upstream and downstream SNPs, SNPs associated with them. So it's a big project for each one of us. What we need to do is go find testers. Our job at this point, when we see equivalents, we need to see if someone in our match list or even someone, let's say we've done cousin DNA, AT DNA at other sites, not just FT DNA, and we see potentials of, hey, we have DNA matches with people that are likely our third, fourth, fifth cousins, and that's about as far as you're going to get. You could get a little further back, but AT DNA, and they're in that direct line. Those are the individuals you encourage to Y DNA test, and it could easily help you break a SNP block apart get those equivalents, a bunch of them together, get those equivalents broke into separate and say, hey, this was formed in 1680, roughly. This one was born, formed in 1730, et cetera, up the line all the way up to yours. In my case, 1924 is my family's defining one. So based on what I've just said, you know what a equivalent is. It's just found in the multiple testers and they don't know which one came first. That's the equivalent. And what to do next? We need to find that next tester to break it up to where there's only one SNP listed per column. That's the ultimate goal that we should have. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing right here or watch some of these other videos. Let's continue learning together.